gonna make my chocolate orange bundt cake. And if you ever wanted a show-stopping table centerpiece to serve at Christmas, this is it. And it's really not that difficult, but it looks and tastes amazing. So we're gonna start off with adding um, some unsalted butter, room temperature unsalted butter, otherwise it will not mix, into our mixing bowl. So I've got 225 grams here of unsalted room temperature butter. Leave it behind. And then to that, I'm going to add in some caster sugar, 450 grams of caster sugar. Okay, and that's going to go straight in. It's a lot of sugar, I know, but it's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to start to beat this and I'm going to beat it for around two or three minutes because I want it to be really light and pale and fluffy and we've got loads to do anyway, so we can leave that to get on, become light and fluffy and we can get on and do something else. Okay, so this is a bunch of tin. So our cake is going to have this beautiful shape when it comes out. But for in order for it to come out with this beautiful shape, we have to make sure we grease it really well and also flour it. So that's what we're going to do now. So I have to take a, literally a piece of kitchen roll. Just get a good blob of butter on that. And then I'm just going to literally rub it into every single groove in this thing. If you miss a bit, it'll stick a bit. So now what we're going to do is flour it. So we've greased it, now we need to add flour to aid with the stopping sticking process. So I just take a sieve to then stick kind of the big chunks of flour, it's like an even, finer finish. And then I'm just going to tap the sieve. But I'm going to do it on all the sides. On the base, keep the turn, keep the turn. Okay, let's look at our butter and sugar. That's looking good. I'm actually just going to turn this off and scrape down the sides. I always think that the mixer sometimes leaves some little bits at the sides or at the bottom, so I always like to give a little bit of a mix myself. Okay, so now we're going to add in our eggs. So we've got four eggs, I'm going to add them in one at a time. I always crack my eggs into a bowl first. It's a lot easier to fish your eggshell out of that than it is out of that. So I'm just going to put my eggs in one at a time. I'm just going to let each one incorporate before I add the next. Okay, now we're going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract because we love vanilla extract. Okay, so that's ready. So what we need to do now is mix our dry ingredients together. Okay, so now we're gonna to sift together our dry ingredients ready to add in to our butter, sugar and egg mixture. This is an amazing sieve, really easy. So into that I'm gonna add 300 grams of plain flour. Straight in. Then 85 grams of cocoa powder. You can sift this really because the cocoa powder, as you can see, is generally quite lumpy. So it's a nice way to make sure you get a really lovely, fine, dry ingredient mix. So that I'm going to add in some cinnamon. It's Christmas. And then also some salt. And finally, finally, some bicarbonate of soda. That's going to get sifted in as well. This is just a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, pre-measured. 
and then just get rid of these. And then we're just going to sieve all this together. Just the easiest way to sieve. I always find that when I've actually got a sieve over a bowl and I'm shaking it and banging it, I end up with more outside the bowl and inside the bowl, but this is brilliant. I'll put a link for it on my website as well. Really good as well if you've got children and you're letting them get involved. They're less likely to miss the bowl like I did. Okay, that's our dry ingredients. So we're now going to start adding these dry ingredients to our mixture. So we've got our butter and egg and sugar mixture here. We've got our dry ingredients here. Then I've also got 280 ml of freshly squeezed orange juice. So when you're squeezing lemons, oranges, limes, whatever, it's better at room temperature. They let the juice out a lot easier. But a really easy way to do it is this little gadget. It's fantastic, really cheap off the internet, and it's got a dual purpose. So this is what I use to squeeze my orange juice. But if you're like me and you bake a lot and you have to separate a lot of eggs, turn that over, pop that in, and you can actually separate your eggs. You crack your egg in two there, and literally that grabs the yolk and the white goes underneath, and it's a fail-safe way to separate your eggs. It also comes with a little grating attachment as well, which is fantastic. So that is a definite buy for me. Put that there. Okay, so I'm gonna start adding, I'm gonna put the mixer on low-ish, because I don't want an explosion of cocoa and flour, and I'm gonna add alternate the dry ingredients with this orange juice. So I'm going to start with the flour, mixture of the dry ingredients, I'm going to end with the dry ingredients. In between, I'm going to alternate with the orange juice. So I'm going to start off with a spoonful of the dry ingredients in the bowl. And then as that starts to mix in, I'm going to add in some of the freshly squeezed orange juice. Dry ingredients. And some more of the orange juice. delicious rich cake. Rest the orange juice in there. And then we're going to add in the remaining dry ingredients. Okay, and then I'm just going to give it a mix myself with the spatula. So like I said, I always think the mixers miss a bit, but if we do it by hand, we can make sure that it doesn't. So, go. this is a lot of cake mixture. So I'm not actually gonna overfill this. So when I think there's enough, you can actually make chocolate orange cupcakes with it. You don't need to throw it away, but I'm just gonna make sure I don't overfill it because I don't want it to overflow. So here I've got two tablespoons of grated orange zest as well. So I'm gonna fold that in now at this point, this mixture. So we can see the bits that the mixer missed at the bottom. Time to start putting this mixture into our Brimpton. I just think I'm actually going to use this spoon most likely to put it everywhere. So I'm just going to try and get it evenly around the edges. So it 
up to move your tin around as you're doing it. I'm going to spread it out a little bit in a minute, so don't worry about the spoonfuls being exactly the same size. It really doesn't matter. I'm not going to put too much more in this because I don't want, so I don't want it all to start overflowing in the oven. Okay, so I'm just going to use my spatula now to just spread it into an even-ish layer. This is going to go into an oven now, not particularly hot, around 165 degrees and I'm going to leave it for around 55-60 minutes but I'm going to check it with um, either a toothpick or a cake tester just to make sure it comes out clean before I take it out of the oven. So let's get this in the oven and it can get cooking. Okay, it's been in the oven now for around 55 minutes. So I want to test it to see if it's ready for it to come out of the oven. And if not, we can leave it a little bit longer, but I don't want it to overcook. So let's take a look. So you can do this with a toothpick, or I've got a little cake tester here as well. I'm just going to open the oven, see that it's risen nicely. I'm just going to pop that into the centre of the cake. It comes out clean, which tells me. So I'm just going to leave it to cool in the tin now for a little while and then it'll be the moment of truth where we're going to tip it out onto the board and let's hope it comes out. The moment of truth. Our bundt cake has been cooling in the tin now for around 10 minutes, so it's time to tip it out and let it cool completely. And even though we greased it and we floured it, this moment I am always nervous. So I've taken my board, my cake board, and I'm just going to put the board on top first and then I'm going to tip the cake over. And at this point, we're going to hope that it comes out. There we go. And we've got our chocolate orange bunt cake looking incredible. So we're going to let that cool completely now. Oh my God, this smells amazing. It's going to be really hard not to eat this before it comes. We're going to let it cool completely. We're going to make the most incredible chocolate orange ganache, which is going to go over the top. And then we're just going to give it a little festive twist. And then that will be your show-stopping table centerpiece on your Christmas table. So it's time to finish off our show-stopping table centerpiece chocolate orange bundt cake. So I've just heated up some double cream here and I'm just going to pour it over this which is just some really good quality dark chocolate that I've chopped quite finely. So I'm just going to pour the double cream straight in. And I'm just going to leave it for a minute before I start to stir it. As tempting as it is, I'm just gonna leave it for one minute. So now we're gonna start stirring. And you'll see very quickly, we'll start to get a lovely smooth ganache. And then once we get this lovely smooth ganache, we're going to add in some butter to make it even more glossy and delicious and then this is a chocolate orange ganache so you could actually have added in some um, orange zest but because I want it to be really smooth I'm just going to add in the orange extract so this is looking perfect now and absolutely beautiful so now I'm just going to add in some butter this is just room temperature unsalted butter I'm going to put straight in let that start to melt down and then just a teaspoon of this orange extract which smells amazing. 
that's going to go straight in. Give this a stir. We want all these flavours combined and we just want this butter to melt down. And then you just see we're just getting this amazing like want to dive into smooth chocolate ganache. Okay, so our ganache is ready. I think you can do what you want, you can drizzle it, whatever, but I'm just going to literally put it all over this cake and then I'm just going to let it start to fall over all the sides. Just don't think you can have too much of this. Just to cover up all the edges and then start encouraging it to drip down. Because we have to give it a festive twist, as I do with everything, I've bought these gorgeous little hollies, edible hollies and wreaths, and I'm just going to pop them. Yeah. Have your show-stopping table centerpiece, my chocolate orange bundt cake with chocolate orange ganache.